here we are. This one took quite a while to really figure out, but I introduced to you my Electron Tube Farm. Now, this is a rather complex build, so make sure you watch the full video because I will show you how to set everything up. Filters, funnels, etc. However, you can make it a whole lot simpler for yourself if you just use the schematic cannon. Since I seem to get a lot of newer create players, including those who didn't even know about the schematic cannon, I'll demonstrate it towards the end of the video. Before you start to use this machine, I recommend just leaving it running for about 5-10 to 10 minutes. That way it can build up some sand, quartz, and iron. I built this with my player looking north. The front of the machine is facing south. So, make whatever rotation adjustments you need for other orientations. Now. Let me tell you how it works. Starting from the top, we just have my standard small cobblestone generator, though I did change around the location of the clutch. It is currently one block down, with a vertical gearbox going into the large cogwheel. Once 64 cobblestone is generated, it gets dropped into these crushing wheels here. The resulting gravel gets input into that chute right underneath the crushing wheels immediately, and we have this funnel right here to pull out 61 of the 64 gravel. The remaining three gravel goes into the next set of crushing wheels to become sand. That sand then immediately drops into the chute here, and this andesite funnel here pulls one of the three sand out of the chute. The 61 gravel and the one sand fall into this chute, which then come down here into this brass funnel. The remaining two sand drops onto this brass funnel right here, which is set to disallow sand from passing through. The sand gets haunted into soul sand, and is then passed through onto this chute here. Gravel and soul sand accumulate right here on top of this brass funnel. The filter on this brass funnel is set to disallow gravel and soul sand from passing through. So the remaining resources, such as clay, flint, iron nuggets, quartz, and gold, pass through the filter. The resources go into this chute, which then drop into the item vault here. The iron nuggets will drop out of the vault into this basin here, which then gets pressed into iron ingots. The iron ingots then get deposited onto the depot, which then get pressed into iron sheets. The iron sheets gets pulled from the depot by the smart chute into the item vault here. Sand and nether quartz accumulate within the item vault here. I've included this sign, the content observer, and the display link, that way you can have a general idea of how much sand and nether quartz is currently within the item vault. Redstone you will either feed or put into this barrel here. This sign here will show you the conversion ratios. On the back side you'll put paper or feed paper into this barrel here. I've included the sign for conversion ratios. Gold Gold nuggets, clay, and flint will be pulled out of the item vault here by this brass funnel, and then voided into this cauldron filled with lava. Upon this redstone link deactivating, the two brass funnels, as well as the two smart chutes, will drop the set number of resources they have been filtered to. Eight quartz, one sand, 64 redstone, and one paper all accumulate into this item vault here, which is then dropped into this basin by the brass funnel above it. The sand and paper will mix into sandpaper, the 64 redstone and 8 nether quartz will combine into 8 rose quartz. This brass funnel is set to pull out rose quartz in sets of 8. It then gets dropped into this andesite funnel to be deposited onto this depot. The sandpaper gets pulled from underneath the basin by this smart chute and deposited into the deployer. The rose quartz is then polished, and the resulting polished rose quartz gets pulled out from this smart chute into this item vault. I then use a series of andesite funnels and barrels to send the polished redstone quartz into this item vault here. Rose quartz is pulled out of this item vault by this brass funnel here and left on the depot, whereas iron sheets is pulled out by this brass funnel and left on this depot. The mechanical arm you see here takes from both depots and deposits them into these brass funnels. The brass funnel on top takes the rose quartz, whereas the bottom brass funnel takes the iron sheet. The two are combined in the mechanical crafter to create the electron tube, and the electron tubes accumulate within the barrel. Now that I've shown you how it works, let's take a look at all of the filters and configurations. This brass funnel is set to pull out 64 cobblestone. This brass funnel is set to pull out 61 gravel. The filter on this brass funnel is set to disallow sand. The filter on this brass funnel is set to disallow gravel and soul sand. The filter on this brass funnel is set to pull out iron nuggets. The filter on this brass funnel is set to pull out gold nuggets, flint, and clay balls. The left smart chute is set to 8 nether quartz. The brass funnel in front is set to 64 redstone. The smart chute on the right is set to 1 sand. And the brass funnel on the back side is set to 1 paper. The filter on this brass funnel is going to remain empty. The brass funnel on the side of the basin is set to pull 
pull out eight rose quartz. The smart chute underneath the basin is set to pull out sandpaper. The smart chute underneath the depot here is set to pull out iron sheets. This smart chute pulls out polished rose quartz from this depot here. The brass funnel on the front side is set to pull out one polished redstone quartz. The brass funnel on the back side is set to pull out one iron sheet. The brass funnel on the top is set to polished redstone quartz. The brass funnel on the bottom is set to iron sheets. The frequency for this redstone link is an electron tube by the antenna and a cobblestone on the bottom. And remember to make sure it's set to receive. Here is the other redstone link with the same frequency. The stockpile switch is set to 95% and 10%. To prevent clogging up the item vault that stores the same and quartz, I've included one more stockpile switch and redstone link, and it is again set to electron tube and cobblestone. The redstone link here is a bit more tricky due to where it's set up. I recommend placing it down before you set down the smart shoots and the brass funnels. Make sure the antenna is set to its receive mode, and the frequency by the antenna is going to be the polished redstone quartz, and the other side is going to be an iron sheet. There is a redstone link on this content observer here set to the basin, and its purpose is to prevent the basin from overfilling. Its frequency is the same polished rose quartz and iron sheet. The timer mechanism here can be set to whatever number that you want. If you only want eight, then you can set it to just one second, or if you want several dozen or more, you can set it to whatever minute value that you wish, up to the limit of 30 minutes. The redstone link for the timer controls is set to polished rose quartz and an iron sheet. When you're setting down the pulse extender, right click to make sure that these two redstone torch nodes are on by default. And if you set everything up correctly, you should just need to hit this button, the drop happens, and then everything ends up in that basin. For orientations other than the default, you might need to change this rotation speed controller to negative 160, and this rotation speed controller to negative 1. Before starting the production with your machine, here's something you can do with the deployer to ensure smooth efficiency. Toss one paper and one sand to make the first sandpaper. Because it is a toss-up, whether the sandpaper or the rose quartz gets made first, doing this will make sure that your deployer can immediately start working on its polishing. Now then, for you new Create players, let's demonstrate the schematic cannon. The schematic cannon is this block right here. Along with it, you're going to need to set up your schematic table. Take an empty schematic and right click on the schematic table, insert the empty schematic into this slot here. Take a look at your available schematics and then scroll down until you hit the electron tube farm that you need. Hit this check mark and it will start to load the schematic. When you get the finished schematic, go ahead and take it back, and when you're holding it, you'll have a prompt here to position. Go ahead and right click to set the position. Now you'll see a ghost schematic of the entire machine, and you see this menu with a bunch of options. As on screen, hold left alt to focus, and the scroll wheel to cycle between the different options. You'll want to play around with this yourself, because it does take just a couple minutes to get accustomed to it, but you want to scroll over to the move Y, and when you want to position this, you will hold left control and then use your scroll wheel down to move it down or up to move it up. I recommend putting this build into the ground a bit. You don't have to do this, but I do recommend digging out the pit that you'll be putting your schematic into. Once you have the schematic in position, you're going to go into your schematic cannon by right clicking and putting this schematic into the slot here. It'll give you the prompt that is out of gunpowder, so you'll take a gunpowder and put it into this slot here. Now if you're building this in survival, the best way to make sure that you have all your materials is to take a book and to put it into this location right here. That book will turn into a materials checklist. You can then take a look at this material checklist and it will tell you all the resources that you'll need for this build. That checklist though does not include the redstone link, the pulse extender, or the button that you'll need for this build. So be sure to make those while you're at it. When you have the materials collected for the build, go ahead and set down an inventory adjacent to the schematic cannon. Put all the resources that you need for the build into the inventory, and then go back into the schematic cannon. As you can see here, it is currently in its pause mode. The square button here will stop the cannon if it's in the process of making a build. And this play button here will begin the construction of the schematic. Before you do that though, I recommend taking a look at this show printer settings. Here you can see several options. Go ahead and give them a read through. Press the check mark here to confirm all your settings. Then, once everything is ready, you just hit this play button and the machine will build your schematic. Once it's built, you could cover it in glass or something, that way you can still see everything that's going on. One thing to note about the schematic cannon is that it doesn't place multi-block structures perfectly. So if you use it, you'll need to break each of the vaults and then replace them. And for good measure, do the same thing with your chain drives. The schematic cannon will not place down your liquid sources, so you will have to do that yourself. 
The fluid tanks here will each need one bucket of lava. However, you cannot put lava directly into the fluid tanks in survival. You'll have to make use of these three mechanical pumps here. For the time being, go ahead and break this shaft here to make sure none of the rest of the machine is powered. After that, take a temporary block and place down a couple blocks like so. Once you have the blocks placed, go underneath them. Break these three trapdoors. Then, set down your lava buckets. If your trapdoors fall into the item vault, all you'll need to do is remove the filter on this block here. You'll get your trapdoors back, and all you need to do is reset the filter. Now that you have your lava sources down, flip these three trapdoors. Then you need to grab yourself a power source and just hook it up to this vertical gearbox. As you can see, the mechanical pumps are now spinning. Take your wrench and then flip their orientations. You'll see now that the lava in these fluid tanks are slowly building up, and the lava on the other side of the pumps are now gone. Once the fluids stop filling, you can go ahead and remove your power source. Then remember to reflip your mechanical pumps, reflip your trapdoors, and then break your temporary blocks. And then you'll need to replace your trapdoors. And that's the simplest way to fill the fluid tanks with a bucket of lava each. Once that's done, go ahead and flip these two outer glass trapdoors. Place down a water bucket in each. The water fills up all three mechanical pumps. Then go ahead and take a water bucket and flood each of these leaves. If your version of Minecraft doesn't allow you to flood leaves, you can use stairs or any other block that you can flood. And if you don't have any kind of floodable blocks, then you can just use full size like so. One last thing that you'll need to do is grab yourself another lava bucket, and on this side, this cauldron needs to be filled with lava. Once everything is done, go ahead and make sure that you replace this shaft here, double check that your brass funnel is set to 64 cobble, and that your three pumps are facing downwards. And to help with the efficiency of the build, before startup, you can go ahead and toss in one sand and one paper into this basin. That way this deployer has a sandpaper to start off. And that should be everything that you need to know about the schematic cannon. And that should be everything that you need to know for this build. If you liked the video, I would appreciate it if you would like the video. And if you're enjoying what I'm doing on my channel, I'd love it if you would subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments below. However, if you're having a problem, please make sure that you include some details. Please write more than it doesn't work, because that doesn't help me figure it out. Thank you for watching.